Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Oh good, it's YouTube's signature move, a man explaining to industry professionals how they're doing their job wrong. It's the worst platform on planet Earth. So here I am, despite being weaker than Ollie Davies likes his tea. Sidebar, I'm not kidding. He puts the bag in for 10 seconds and exactly half the cup is milk. He actually measures in the mug, so it's exactly half milk. I've seen him do it, he's a piece of shit. Despite being weaker than that, here are my precious numerical opinions about WWE's current roster and which of them should do a different thing that I would never be able to do if he gave me a full year, a personal trainer, and an entire white boy body transplant. To make it a little less hateful, this isn't a list of wrestlers with bad finishers, it's a list of superstars who have a much better finisher in their own moveset, but for some reason they're not using it on the Reginald. It's 10 WWE wrestlers who have the wrong finisher and what they should have. Number 10. Edge the Spear. Welcome back, Edge. We have missed you so, so, so much. Stop doing the spear. The rated R Super Star returned at the Royal Rumble, looking like he's been sleeping rough at Muscle Beach for the past 30 years. Scary beard, haunted eyes, bumpy tummy, lovely. And of course, the first thing he did was go on a running cuddle spree. Now, listen, I completely understand that. Like the cutter or the super kick, it's just an over move, no ifs, buts, or coconuts. But Edge could get away with the spear in 2011 when there wasn't anyone else on the roster doing it, but when you got the bog dog knocking out his ooh every week and the person with the best of all spears, Goldberg, still going in the year of our Lord 2020, then beyond nostalgia pops, the spears got to go. Surely, replace it with the Educator. Remember this? It's like a kneeling, inverted, crazy eye sharpshooter, and it looks boss. He used it to finish a few matches, but never as many as the spear, and just look at that face. He sells it so well. There's a lack of quality submission finishes in today's WWE, and this serves Edge's current look so much more than his spear, which other wrestlers are currently doing better. Number 9. Rhea Ripley, The Riptide It's not like The Riptide is crazy bad for Rhea Ripley, but for someone whose entrance theme screams, this is my brutality, a pump handle slam is just a bit tame. I mean, sure, at least Rhea doesn't hump her opponent first like Road Dog used to do, but after years of pump handle slams being transitional moves in wrestling, it doesn't stand out as worthy of someone like the NXT Women's Champion. The Avalanche Riptide is really fun, but that's more of a mega death WrestleMania move and would be a colossal pain in the hole to do every week. Replace it with the big boot. Rhea Ripley has giant legs with giant boots and she should absolutely demolish people with both. The big boot is hugely underrated as a finisher if done right. Test's big boot was unbelievably good. I know that Charlotte occasionally hits the big boot, but during their upcoming Mania feud, that's a really good way to transition the move to Rhea because honestly, she's hit it on NXT a few times and it's a lot better than Charlotte's. Number eight, Goldberg the Jackhammer. Like, okay, the Jackhammer is fine. It's fine, it's a really sassy suplex. It's very good at tricking the audience that because big lad Goldberg floats over into a slamming position that it carries more impact than a regular suplex, but it absolutely doesn't because Goldie breaks his own fall. To be honest, the brain buster he cracked out in Saudi Arabia looked a lot more painful. Why isn't that in Goldberg's regular moveset? He says like a sarcastic asshole. Sure, the jackhammer got over for a reason, and remember, this list isn't necessarily about wrestlers who have bad finishers, but rather they have something in their existing moveset that's better, so much better, replace it with the spear because it's the best spear in the history of wrestling. Look at all these people meeting their ghosts because of Bill's big shoulders. Boom, 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 boom. Goldberg's spear is possibly the most realistically painful looking move of all time. It should feature prominently in scared straight programs. How wrestlers take the move and don't spend the rest of their lives as two smaller wrestlers is beyond me. It's so much better than the jackhammer and I'll fight you if you disagree. Number 7. Keith Lee Fireman's carry jackhammer. And so Adam's quest to get everyone to unsubscribe from WrestleTalk by ragging on the jackhammer continues apace. Again, this is an attitude adjustment with theatrics. It's got a hefty bit of bounce to it, and it's a lovely bit of showmanship. If a more limited big man had it in his arsenal, it would absolutely work as his finisher, but we're talking about a limitless big man. We're talking about Keith Lee, the man I will someday marry, the man whose poster I kiss every night before writing Mr. Adam Lee in my diary over and over again. He can do better, and he free frequently does, replace it with the spirit bomb. The god damn spirit bomb. It is unfathomable to me that this isn't the most protected finisher in the dub today. The bounce, god damn it. The bounce. It just looks absolutely devastating, and the fact that he can pop up guys like Drew McIntyre and god damn Walter for it makes it even more of a showstopper. A beautiful move for a beautiful man. Number 6. Kofi Kingston, Trouble in Paradise. Who doesn't like a kick to the head? I certainly do. Before his run with the WWE Championship, Kofi's longtime finisher could be seen as a pretty decent method 
metaphor for his career. Fun, acrobatically impressive, incongruously Jamaican, but also a bit lightweight, not always connecting, and ultimately never making the impact you think it should. Compare it to Black Mass, both kicks to the face, but only one of them convinces as a match ender. It's a decent move in theory, but you get the sense that because it involves a flip, Kofi rarely drills it with enough force for fear of knocking his opponent's teeth out. Replace it with SOS. 10% of the time, it looks terrible, but 90% of the time, it looks great every time. Kofi can't hit it on everyone with the same impact that he can a Daniel Bryan or better yet a Dolph Ziggler, but like Kofi himself, it's fun, acrobatically impressible, it's not in any way Jamaican, and is capable of creating a huge impact if given half a chance. Number 5. Alexa Bliss, The DDT I keep refreshing her pro wrestling fandom page and, yep, Alexa Bliss's finisher is still just a DDT. I mean, Twisted Bliss is just sort of falling with style, but at least it's some Thing. Now look, before you all inch your glasses up the bridge of your nose and remind me, cozy little fucks that you are, that Jake the Snake Roberts DDT was legendary in the 80s, well so was crimped hair and steroids and I don't want those in my wrestling anymore either. Overuse and a plethora of more impactful moves like the Impaler, the Future Shock, even the Rope Hung DDT means the days of the standard DDT being in any way a viable finisher are long over. Replace it with the Code Red. She calls it the Glitter Blizzard, and as much as that sounds like a special birthday package offered by a party planner trying to capitalize on Frozen, Bliss is pretty great at it. Like Kofi's SOS, sometimes it goes a little floppy pancake terrible, but most of the time it looks boss. It fits her whole don't underestimate my five feet of fury gimmick, and I can't emphasize this enough, it's better than just a DDT. Number four, AJ Styles, the Phenomenal Forearm. Wow, we all sure did get used to the name Phenomenal Forearm, didn't we? So look, the move is a, very visually impressive, and B, booking-wise, is a cool way to open up styles with surprise counters. But to counter both of those, A, it's only impressive up until it's very soft impact, and B, that booking is starting to get a little played out. I know it's not called the phenomenal elbow, but Styles should remove his elbow pad before he does it, and it should be the phenomenal elbow, and don't call it the phenomenal elbow. As a signature move, it does the business, which is why Styles used it as a signature move and not his finisher for his entire pre-WWE career. But as his finisher, there's just one clear, obvious choice. Replace it with the Calf Crusher. Oh damn, son! Now look, I know people like the Styles Clash, but I don't know why people like the Styles Clash. We all hate Cesaro's Neutralizer, right? The Styles Clash has as much impact as that. Unless you're doing it from Brett's rope, it inescapably looks soft. Look, the whole air quotes dangerous aspect of it doesn't turn me off the move, but it also doesn't give it a thrilling edge for me either, which I assume is part of the reason why fans clamor for it so much. WWE doesn't want AJ to do it, goes announced narrative, so we therefore love it. Well, it's not for me. The Calf Crusher, on the other hand, is perfect for a smart technician like Styles. It looks like it hurts. You can build a match narrative around destroying the leg. It can be hit on anyone. You can transition to it in a number of super smooth ways. It's brilliant. Fight me. Number 3. Baron Corbin End of Days Baron Corbin is very good at his job. Even back in the days of NXT when the consensus was that Baron Corbin was not good at his job, he got people's attention in no small part to his finishing move End of Days. It looked completely different, it was safe, but with enough rotational bells and whistles to convince as a finisher, and even though sometimes it has a tendency these days to look a little soft, it still does the job as a solid, dependable finisher. Only problem is, as Baron Corbin has become, once more with feeling, very good at his job, he's become really good at delivering a move that is even better. Replace it with Deep Six. Deep Six is goddamn great. I mean, Christ, Corbin has a pretty great choke slam. the end of days, and now this, the greedy finisher hoarding piglet. There are two versions of Deep Six, one which is a spinning rock bottom, and one which is a spinning back suplex, and yes, either iteration is just that relatively low impact move with theatrics, but that spin really creates a sense of increased momentum and impact, more so than the end of days, and the fact that he can launch it as a surprise attack at any time makes it more pop worthy. Number two, Kevin Owens. Owens, the stunner. Kevin Owens is one of the best men. He's caught fire as an anti-establishment truth to power babyface, and what better way to say I am a tough SOB than the stunner, like it's a cool finisher. And I know from working backstage at a wrestling promotion, the only thing grown men want to do is hit each other with stunners. But here's the thing, the Owens cold stunner looks great, but there comes a point where a wrestler becomes so huge, such a household name, that their move becomes so unbreakably linked with that wrestler. Like if Shinsuke Nakamura started cranking out the rock bottom, you'd be like, um, 
Um, and if Samoa Joe started doing the Tombstone pile driver, it would be really weird. It's not a question of KO, quote, stealing anything. He asked Austin's permission and it was freely given, but it'll always be so much more Austin's move that it feels, to me at least, that KO is doing Stone Cold cosplay or mucking around on a house show when he does it, and he's so much better than that. Does that make sense? I know the reason Owens changed it up was because there were too many power bombs in the wrestling world today, which is why replace it with the package pile driver. It looks brutal, it's safe, can be done on the ring apron or from the top rope if you need a super death variant. I really cannot fathom why the selective pile driver ban rattles on in WWE. Yes, bad things have happened as a result of a particularly infamous botch to Steve Austin, but if old man Taker is still cracking out the far more scary tombstone and Adam Cole is allowed to hit the Panama sunrise, I don't understand why Owens, who after years of performing it as Kevin Steen really owns the move, doesn't get a chance to do it. Seems like WWE might want to reclaim it after Pentagon Jr. has been cracking it out in AEW. And number one, John Morrison's Starship Pain. John Morrison is a big sexy daddy and while Starship Pain looks almost as pretty as the wrestler himself, it's weaker than an Ollie Davies cup of tea. Genuinely, an Ollie is probably a good person, but if you shout the word tea at a glass of milk, that is stronger than how Ollie Davies takes it. I'm not saying there's anything explicitly immoral about it, but the way he looks at you directly in the eyes as he drinks it and demands we all bang our hands on the desk and shout big gulp as he sees it off in one and then eats the mug so it can never be used for any different kind of tea. I just, Starship Pain only ever really glances off Morrison's opponents and it really breaks a suspension of disbelief. Replace it with the C4. Johnny M is a flippity dude and this is one of the best and weirdly underutilized moves for people with his skill set. It's been used by Paul Birchall when he was a pirate from the top rope as a Spanish fly or a flux capacitor if you're Kazarian and John Morrison has even used it himself beautifully, I might add. It carries the same visual spectacle as Starship Pain, but it actually, you know, looks like it might finish somebody. Who else on the roster is using the wrong finisher? Tell me how much you like the jackhammer in the comments and if you could share this video on socials as well as giving it a subscribe or a thumbs up, that all helps too. And check out more news, reviews and predictions on WrestleTalk.